Good morning, everyone. In accordance with the Book of Order of the PCUSA, together with the bylaws of the First Presbyterian Church and Congregation of Dover, the annual congregational meeting will be held on Sunday, March 19th, 2023, in the chapel immediately following worship. The purpose of the meeting is to receive annual reports from all boards, committees, and officers, to elect the auditors and nominating committee, receive the 2023 church budget, discuss any financial questions that may be brought up, and act on any business brought up in compliance with the Book of Order of the PCUSA. All church members are requested to attend this important meeting. Please note, we need a minimum of 15 active members to have the needed quorum. Attest this on the fifth day of March, 2023, Jeanette Felt, Clerk of Session.
Good morning and welcome to First Memorial. Thank you for joining us this morning. Please join me in the call to worship printed in your bulletins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Blessed is he whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed. Who gives root to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. The way of the wicked brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. And the Amazing Grace theme verse for the third Sunday of Lent is one thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see, from John 9, verse 24. Please join me in singing Broken Vessels or Amazing Grace as printed on the back page of your bulletin. <coughs>
Jesus showed grace to the blind man and restored his sight. Trusting in God's compassion and saving love, we confess our sins and ask his forgiveness for Jesus' sake. Almighty God, although we claim to see and know so much, all so often we are lost in blindness to our sins. We follow tempting pathways that set our minds off the path of life. We act according to our own desires instead of obeying the guidance of your own word. Have mercy on us and devote our sins. Open our eyes so that by faith we will see the wonders of your love and grace. God has had mercy on us. He sent his Son to be our Savior, the Lord and Messiah who opened the eyes of the blind came to lay down his life as the perfect sacrifice of our sins. I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. Almighty God, we pray that by your Spirit you would grant us the clear sight of faith to see the wonders of your love and power in our lives. Through Jesus' redeeming death, we have forgiveness and eternal life. As the blind man told others about the miracle that had been accomplished in his life, help us to witness boldly to your amazing grace and tell others of the hope and peace that can be theirs through faith in Jesus. As the man who was healed worshiped Jesus, we too worship Jesus as our Messiah and Lord. Hear our prayer and accept our praise in his holy name. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Remaining in place, please greet one another and proclaim God's peace, continuing this practice with all you meet or speak to this coming week. Okay, guys, do you, any of you know somebody that is blind? Do you know what blind means? They can't see. Very good, Sebastian. So does anybody know anybody that's blind? No, you do? Your dog is blind? Yeah, that happens sometimes, especially as they get older. So some people are born blind, right? And then some people, it happens to them as they grow up, as they get older, sometimes their eyes, they have issues and they lose their sight. So, yes, Abby, what's up? It's also, I'm supporting a tiger, a white tiger named Kaya. Oh, you're supporting. Cool. Oh, very <laughs> awesome. That's cool. So, how do blind people get around? How do they, what, what do you There's think? There's a special dog. There's a special dog, right? What about, Abby? What? The seeing eye dogs, yeah, which is pretty cool because we have the seeing eye dog, they're training right in Morristown, which isn't that far. Yes, they Sebastian. Have, like, the they have a stick, yep. When I lived in Washington, D.C., the street lights have this really cool thing. When it's time for somebody to walk, they'll beep so that if you're blind or hard, you can't really see well, you know when it's your turn to go because the, the sign beeps at you. Um, what about family? Can family help them around? Right? Family, friends, of course. So, in today's Bible lesson, we are going to hear about a man who was born blind. So, his whole life he hasn't been able to see. And he meets Jesus. And what do you think Jesus did? He made him so he could see. Right. So, back then they have what they call the Sabbath. And that is a day where people rested. You weren't allowed to do any work. Okay, in Orthodox Jewish communities, they still do this. There's actually like a, my friend lives in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and that's a huge Orthodox community. And there's a siren that goes off at five o'clock on Friday, and that tells them, okay, 
you guys need to stop and it's rest day so jesus did this on what they consider the sabbath a rest day so do you think the church leaders were happy about this that he did work on the sabbath no they were not happy and do you know why else they weren't happy because go ahead because he wasn't supposed to work and he did right but they also weren't very happy because people were starting to follow Jesus and they weren't really following them anymore. They weren't really following the church leaders anymore. So, what do you think happened next? Do you think Jesus cared if they were angry? Not really. He was helping people, right? Right. So, people started, <clears throat> excuse me, people started believing in Jesus and what Jesus was saying and not so much what the church leaders were saying. So, they didn't want people to follow Jesus anymore. So, do you think, can we see God? Can we see Jesus? No, we can't. So we're kind of blind to Jesus and God, right? Because we can't see them. But you know, we have a special type of sight. It's called our faith. And that's how we see Jesus and God, right? Yes. So that means we know who Jesus is, right? We believe in him. And we can tell other people about them, right? other people that might be blind to Jesus and blind to God, we can help them, right? Just like the family and friends, just like dogs, just like the cane, help blind people that can't see with their eyes, right? All right, so let's pray. Dear Jesus, we see you with our eyes of faith and we know and believe that you are the Savior. Help us to tell others about you so that they can believe in you too. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for today comes to us from the prophet Isaiah, the 35th chapter, beginning at the fourth verse. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf leap like a, do a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals, where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes, and a highway shall be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy. And sorrow and sighing shall flee away. We end this reading at the 10th verse. And continuing with the gospel lesson, according to John from the 9th chapter, verses 1 through 7 and 24 to 38. As he passed by, Jesus saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of the God might be displayed in him. 
We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day, for night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva, and then anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. So for the second time, the Pharisees called the man who had been born blind and said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why, this is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born in utter sin, and would you teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. The man born blind said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the longest narratives we have in the Gospels tells us the story of a man whom Jesus healed from blindness. This man's story compels us to look more closely at our own stories of blindness in fear and how we too come to trust in the healing grace that Jesus brings for our lives and for the lives of all people everywhere. The contrast in the story is between seeing and being blind, between living in the light as opposed to walking in darkness. When we are blind, we are mired in the darkness of our unbelief and fear. But believing in Jesus means seeing with eyes of faith, trusting his healing grace, which sets us free to confess him as Lord over all the threats of fear and death. Seeing is believing. Jesus' own disciples were themselves blind, blind to the very need of the man born blind, focusing their attention only on his sin. They assumed that if he was blind, perhaps he or his parents did something wrong to bring about this illness. While we generally don't make that strong a connection between sickness and sin, nevertheless, Like these disciples, we too often make critical judgments about other people's struggles in life. We are less aware of how such critical judgments point only to our own blindness and sin toward others. This blindness is our Lenten confession. We are blind to the multitude of sins from what we do or from what we leave undone. We can only confess that we are blind sinners in need of God's gracious mercy and sight. For God is merciful to those who confess this blindness of sin, giving them the sight, the faith, that makes them well through Christ. Jesus sees this moment of encounter 
with a person in blindness, not as an occasion for judgment, but as an occasion for shining God's amazing grace upon those in darkness. The blind person did not even ask for this grace that Jesus gives, but he clearly does become the beneficiary of that grace. And as his story progresses, he will see and believe how this moment of encounter links him with, the, with Christ's promise forever. Amen. The blind man's first confession is to make public that he is, indeed, the same blind beggar who used to sit on the street. Luther said on his deathbed, we are all beggars. Yet how many of us are inclined to point out this mortifying truth of our own spiritual poverty? The people before whom the man formerly blind makes his confession had trouble recognizing him. Isn't that also our own problem? Our failure to recognize and accept others. There is so much that divides us from people. Fear, not faith, controls our lives and keeps us from this recognition and acceptance. We fail to see so many others in our world live with many of the same kinds of struggles and fears that haunt our own lives. We are blind to all of this. Moreover, we cannot seem to move beyond this blindness, let alone have a clue as to where to find the healing that we so desperately need. But grace comes to us through Jesus Christ, even without our asking, freeing us to confess before others the truth of our beggarly blind lives and to grasp the promise that we may now stand up before others and confess publicly, I am the man. I am the person who has been so blind in life, unable to recognize anyone, even as I am unrecognizable. But grace has nonetheless come to my life in all the truth of my being a blind beggar. I'm tempted to go chase a rabbit down a trail, but I just want you not to miss the fact that Jesus uses something, a material, if you will, that we would consider dirty. You would not willingly, regularly, understandably put mud in your eyes, whether to see or for any other purpose. And yet Jesus uses something that everybody would have considered dirty to clean him of his sin. The man now makes his confession even more clear to those who are still blind and still walk in darkness. His reason for seeing, from being called out of the darkness into the light, is credited to the man called Jesus, who touched his life with healing and washed away his darkness. They will be forever linked. In our own baptism, we receive this washing away of sin and guilt of blindness and darkness. We come to this new vision that through Christ, we may be enough to make not only the confession of what is already sinfully true in our own lives, but also the joy of faith and new life we get through Christ. We once walked in darkness and sin, but now we get to live in the newness of light and grace in Christ. Our lives are forever linked with Jesus the Christ. I do not know. Seeing is believing. Seeing is trusting. Faith and trust means grasping the promise and grace that is less tangible to the naked eye. Where is the one who healed you? The man is given a forum to confess his faith, but in his weakness, he only says what he does not know. But much bolder witness will eventually be called forth from this man soon enough. He will face his time of trial, not only before the public, but before the religious authorities. 
Jesus encouraged us to pray that we might be spared this critical ordeal. Save us from the time of trial, he said. But times of trial, when they come, can also be times for confessing. And confessing our faith means confessing what we do know, that Jesus the Christ and his gospel of grace even become bold enough to assert that our own healed and forgiven lives through Christ are already living proof of God's amazing grace. He would my eyes, and I wash, and now I see. So the man who was formerly blind is brought to trial. And when they asked for details on how the healing took place, the man confirmed what he had already said on public record. But the authorities seemed less concerned with the healing of this man than with the fact that his healing took place on a Sabbath. In fact, these authorities in their blindness insisted that to be healed on a Sabbath was an act that made Jesus a sinner in their eyes. But some of them were able to see and uphold the miracle of God's grace and healing. Notice how this man's testimony, as brief as it is, leads to a division of the house. This division is not a result of the act of this man or his healing. What they are divided about now is whether or not Jesus the Christ is an agent of God's grace and healing. Their division is about the very gospel itself. In their blindness, they are afraid that their own law may be overturned by this gospel of grace. Indeed, they press the man to witness to his faith. What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. Even they noticed that he and Jesus are forever linked. He is a prophet. Saying that Jesus is a prophet is hardly the boldest confession of faith. Many people may affirm that Jesus was a prophet, but he is so much more than that. He is the one who overcomes the blindness and darkness of our age and gives us the faithful sight and grace in God's mercy. As this man's trial progresses, so will his faith deepen as he becomes bolder in denouncing that darkness, so as he becomes bolder in denouncing that darkness and embrace more firmly the light of Christ. But for the moment, the trial now turns to the parents of the man. They ask him, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? The parents do not even have the faith or courage of their son to face this time of trial. Nor do they affirm their son's testimony. They say, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he now sees. Nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. They lived on the fear that anyone who confessed Jesus as the Messiah, the Christ, would be put out of the synagogue. And being cast out of religious life meant also being cast out of social life as a scandal. But their fear already leads them to deny their own son and to treat him as a scandal. Who wants that label of scandal attached to their lives? We will not find our answer to that question very soon, even as the authorities again call the man who had been blind to testify a second time. They say, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. The man now offers a bolder witness to his faith. Notice now how the scandal is being put on its head. The man does not denounce the scandal of his own life that he had been born blind. Consider that blindness as a confession of the truth of our blind sinfulness. But he adds, now I see. He will not put any distance between himself and Jesus, who is regarded as a scandalous sinner. Indeed, when Jesus associates with scandals like us, 
He takes that scandal of our sins upon himself as his very own. The cross is sometimes called a stumbling block, a scandal to those who are too blind to see its merits for our good. But Jesus accepts the curse of his death on the cross in order to heal the lives of all of us who are blind in our sins, giving us instead the grace of his healing and love. Jesus and the man, even in all scandal, are forever linked. The blind authorities cannot understand. They thrash about in their darkness, repeating questions that the man had already answered earlier. What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? If only. This confession now puts the authorities on the stand. Testify to your source, your grounding. And so they do. You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses. But as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. They chose the law. But the law only leads us further to fear in the blindness of our sins. The law always accuses us, telling us what we are not. But even in his accusation, it may also point us to the gospel of grace, where the law is finally overcome. The man who has regained his sight, whose faith shines the bright light in this moment, stands on this solid ground of the gospel of God's grace in Jesus the Christ even as he witnesses one last time before these legalistic authorities. boldness of this man will not be silenced, for his answer is too good to go unspoken. But these blind authorities cannot see the light of his answer. Instead, they denounce him, just as they did Jesus in their final judgment. You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they cast him out. But even in being cast out, this man is forever linked with Jesus. He stands unafraid, filled with the promise of faithful sight. He trusts that his real appeal is to an authority much greater than all these secular authorities. His faithful appeal is to the authority of God and Jesus the Christ. Fear is conquered when we place our trust in Jesus and his cross. Indeed, this trial was never really about this man who was formerly blind, but about Jesus the Christ and his amazing grace. This grace of Christ holds this man firm. Christ will be with him always, not only in this moment, but in all the moments of his life. Even cast out, we are not alone, for Jesus was cast out upon the cross and is with us still, to grace us in his mercy. Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man will answer. Jesus will answer, you have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. And this man follows with his firmest confession of faith in Jesus the Christ. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, through the faith that you have brought me from being a blind beggar to one who is healed in your grace, Lord, you have given me the courage to stand up and witness to your grace. Lord, you have comforted me that even when all things cast me aside and deny me, you are still with me. Lord, 
you have freed me now to stand with all who are cast aside in this world, blinded by sin and fear. Seeing is believing. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see my face and those who do see may become blind. The critical authorities who founded their lives on the law think of themselves more nobly than they should. They say, surely we are not blind, are we? But Jesus responds, if you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. But confessing our darkness and blindness means turning to the grace of Jesus, healing and light. Amen and amen. We are grateful to have you with us as we worship on this, is it third Sunday in Lent? I left the number out. Whew. If you are not physically present with us in the chapel this morning and feel called in any way to join your hands and hearts with ours in this historic ministry, please consider mailing an offering to our church office this week at 51 West Blackwell Street, deep in the heart of Dover, 07801. And please keep our ministry and those we serve in Jesus' name in your prayers. We were not born blind, O God of light, but do not always see clearly, even with illumination and corrective lenses. As we reflect on your lesson for today, we would ask you to show us the needs you wish us to fill and the hurts you wish us to heal. May our offerings this week be faithful to those ends and serve you faithfully in Jesus' name. Amen. Dale and Dawn Mertz are doing well. We are in the process of ordering Easter flowers for our sanctuary. There's a picture on our Facebook page of the sanctuary with all the flowers in there for Easter. So they are $14 for 
each plant, and you have your choice of daffodils, tulips, Easter lilies, and hyacinths. So we have forms here in the church. For those that are listening, you can send your orders in by contacting us, sending it to 51 West Blackwell Street in Dover, or reaching out to Megan Berg on Facebook um, for our Easter flowers. So the orders are due by March 31st. This week's birthdays are Grace Church, Andrew Berg, Justin Cutches, Kevin Forrester. We want to wish a happy anniversary to Mr. and Mrs. George Becker. And our prayers this week are for Walt, Wayne, Donna, Bob, Karen, Kendra, Hunter, Dawn, Gina, Carrie, Lily, Morgan, Dick, Jen, Tony, John, Nushabi, Debbie, Mario, Paulette, Dolores, Dominic, Kathy, Kyle, and Michael. And we pray for um, those people that have been affected this past week with deaths in the family. Thanks, Kim. <clears throat> we believe, so we pray. Almighty God, during his earthly ministry, your son, our Lord Jesus, healed the sick and restored sight to the blind. He fulfilled all the scriptures had foretold of the Messiah. His healing miracles proved him to be the son of God and the promised Messiah. We give you thanks and praise for your saving work through Jesus, our Savior. Gracious Lord, Almighty God, by the power of your Spirit, give us eyes of faith to see the miracles that you have done and continue to do in our lives, especially the miracle of our salvation in Jesus. Help us to see clearly your truth and to grow in grace as we see Jesus revealed in your holy word. Gracious Lord, have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for those who are suffering through illness, fear, and grief. According to your will, bring them comfort and healing. Lead us to serve them as we offer help to them in their need. Help them to see clearly the hope and encouragement found in the promises of your word, gracious Lord. And mercy on us and hear our prayer. Almighty God, the man whose sight was restored worshiped Jesus as Messiah and Lord. Give us the clear sight of faith so that we too will faithfully worship Jesus as our Savior King. Gracious Lord, have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And make us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever.
so we are always of good courage. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Please be seated for a moment of inspiring music and reflective prayer. Thank you. 